to a And rabbit. sex should be about making babies. Not about pleasure? No. So then what must people do for sexual pleasure, Nota? They shouldn't be using sex for pleasure. There's so many pleasurable things you can do. So many. You can yes. go for a hike. Harrison Mkize hanging out with Nota um, Baloy. <laughs> Nota Baloy, that's, that's your name. No, no, Nshamulo Baloy is my Nshamulo name. Nshamulo Baloy. Uh, and that's NB, and then NB stands for Nota Bena. Ah. So yeah, that's a nickname I got in high school. Why did they call you Nota Bena? Because my NB, that's why. Oh, get yeah. it, get it. So, I yeah. wanted to sit down with you and just like talk to you. Oh, no, thank You're you. You're one of those people that, <laughs> I just want to know what are you thinking, why are you thinking it? Okay. And cool. why are you saying it the way that you're saying it? Internet sensation. Okay, cool. You've yeah. been trending for a while. What yeah. does that feel like? Um, I don't know. I, I don't feel anything about it. Because for me, like, um, uh, making or making people aware of whatever it is I want to make them aware of uh -huh. on social media is something I've been doing since maybe 2006, six, seven. So, yeah. Um, it's just something I know how to do and I'm really good at. And like, mm -hmm. I'm the best at. Like, <laughs> like no doubt about it so you're, like you're the best like, at provoking people no no, no just social media uh -huh. i'm the best at social media how do you position yourself on social media are you are you deliberate about that or is it no. like I, mean, I just find myself no i'm authentic spaces. that's it uh -huh. i'm as real as i don't pretend i don't try to be nice i don't try to be anything i don't care to be liked because i don't know you so you know <laughs> i don't need to convince you to like me or uh -huh. anything like that you know what i mean um and that's it yeah um i don't really think about it like even if you look at my instagram it's not even curated i just post whatever I whatever feel it like, is whatever i feel like posting you know i don't use filters that's another thing like it's a rule for me that why I don't use filters. why would i use filters I... because that's what that's what social media is about no, like so that you it up a bit it's not using it up. It's like get extra likes for looking like something that you're not. So, you know what I mean? Um, I don't believe in makeup as well. Like, especially like young girls shouldn't be wearing makeup. You know, makeup is for corpses. You know? That's not That's fair. actually, that, yeah. Like, why? You know, okay, so let's hear it out. Because there's no life in a corpse. So they use the makeup to give them life so that when you're doing a funeral and you're reviewing the body, you know, it looks at least decent. Um, now you've got young girls, like um, teenagers wearing makeup in high school, wearing foundation and all these things. And those things are bad for your skin. Sure. And um, also their diets are so terrible and bad for their skin. And they're trying to fix that with chemicals instead of changing what they put inside their bodies. But it helps with confidence. Like imagine a teenager that has an acne outbreak and now she puts makeup so that her peers don't laugh at her. Yes, no? No, it actually worsens the confidence because without the makeup, she has even less confidence. You know what I mean? No, I don't. You don't find someone who wears makeup and then then builds up enough confidence, then stops wearing makeup. Please say that differently. My okay. head is not so working. So what I'm trying to say is that the more makeup you, you put wear, on... the less confidence you'll have. And then the more makeup you'll need to mask the lack of confidence that you have. And you say this because you've had makeup on and you've... No, I've never had makeup on. It's just like, you know... By gathering together the different um, uh, psychometric studies on uh, like how people actually um, perceive themselves and mm. their esteems and um, just certain things that people do to give themselves more confidence. You know, when you do that with when you find ways or mechanisms or anything that you can use um, as uh, what you call something to accentuate whatever features it is it ends it. up becoming a crutch uh, you know what i mean if you're dependent on alcohol to have a good time then you're gonna have an even better time once you have the alcohol and also you'll feel like you cannot have a good time without alcohol Get it. and therefore you feel like you cannot look good without makeup and if you cannot look good without makeup you cannot have confidence would you say the same thing with guys that go to the gym to build muscles um, well, it depends. Are they building muscles just for the sake of building muscles to look more attractive? Or are they building muscle to be healthier and stronger? So if I'm going to the gym Fair and I'm point. a firefighter and I have to lift like big, heavy hoses, mm. you know what I mean? I have to climb ladders and everything else. There's a purpose for that uh, level of exercise. Um, and if you don't have to do it and you're just doing it so that you can look good, uh, yeah, then that's obviously a lack equivalent. of self-confidence. You know what, I mean? what would you say is the male equivalent to makeup? 
because I just want to see that your thoughts are balanced. Like you can't, you can't so say. Maybe equivalent to makeup. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, your analogy of confidence, women, makeup. Yeah, but what, men what do don't have do those issues. Men? men don't have those issues because their appearance is not um, the be all and end all. Got it. Whereas with women, if you're ugly, your chances in life are very, very um, uh, different to pretty women. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? The consequences for your actions are much more aligned to the consequences for a man's actions than they are for pretty women who have almost no consequences. By pretty, let's just... Ugly and pretty, let's say... We're, well, it's sym- universal. Ooh, but symmetrical features. Got it. You know what I mean? Like okay. the nose is straight, uh, it's nicely shaped, the lips are nicely shaped, the ears are in nice position, they've got the nice eyebrows, you know, whatever it is, symmetrical. Like people who you can look when the left side of the face resembles the right side of the face. And yeah. And you've traveled quite a lot. Uh, not really. Yeah. I've traveled to Africa, yes. Africa, yes. Yeah, uh, but uh, I've traveled Africa and the United States, that's it. Which, which place in Africa and the United States has the prettiest women? South Africa. With or without in makeup? In the world. With or without makeup? No, without any question. <laughs> Forget makeup. <laughs> South Africa's got the most beautiful women. South Africa's got the beauty in every single variety. Uh-huh. Yeah, we've got every single type of beauty. We've got beautiful white women. Beautiful, beautiful black women, beautiful colored women, beautiful Indian women, beautiful Asian women. Um, you know what I mean? And also, um, we also don't come from like a capitalist society. Uh, you know, um, our colonization uh, really uh, uh, got to um, its peak within, I'd say, maybe the 19th century, Mm -hmm. whereas in other countries, you know, they were colonized a lot earlier. So we've retained a lot more of our cultural uh, integrity um, than other people. So what that did is that we didn't suffer from the effects of capitalism, um, which um, are ugly children. Like um, the result of capitalism... Not so you can't um, call children ugly. I mean, look at... uh, What's that guy who (laughs) died? Please don't... The Prince Charles is an ugly guy. He's ugly. I mean, his parents are cousins. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. see where you're going with yeah, it. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because they want to marry into each other's families to keep the riches, they're not looking at like, oh, we're inbreeding, we're creating, you know, deformities. Yes. We're also making our children asymmetrical and everything else because we're duplicating the bad genes that they've got within their DNA because they are in both our DNAs because we're family. You know mm. what I mean? And um, that's why South Africa doesn't have that problem. You look at Nigeria, by comparison, they were colonized a lot earlier. So Nigerians are not as pretty because people don't marry for beauty. Like, you marry f- to marry into a rich family, you know. But doesn't that happen in South Africa as well? Where people it's happening are now for... a lot more. Mm-hmm. But in South Africa, you, there's a whole lot of Jabulanis that are sitting at Kasi with babies all over. Pretty ones. You know, there's a whole lot of Balesas and Balis. Beautiful. <laughs> that are impregnated by losers who have zero money. You know what I mean? Get it, and you get don't it, get, get that it. In other countries that are more capitalist. What do you think colonized. about? What do you think about marriage? W- well, what about it? Like, what do you think about the institution well, of marriage? Well, the institution of marriage is, um, you know, for the purpose of raising children. Get it. And then, um, once those children have been raised, is the pro- the purpose of growing old together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's it. And anything other than that is not marriage. Anything other than that is a farce. And anything other than that is like the things that people are focused on, which leads to a destruction in the values of marriages. Because they, things like intimacy, right? Sure. Um, uh, have been distorted because we've been over-sexualized. So everything has to be based on sex. Like you, 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 you cannot date someone and not and sleep, not with, sleep them. with them. It, by pers- like by, yes, you know what I mean? By, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, like, think about it like this. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Um, uh, I made a promise, right? Uh, to uh, who? Uh, to my wife that when I go to the States, oh. I'm going to be completely celibate. It was like a bitch. She was like, she, I would last six months. I lost it. And I was confident in myself because I trust myself and I know who I am. So just the way in which we've been over-sexualized, especially as males, it's like True. we're seen as people who were driven by sex. Yeah. You know, we're sex crazed. And especially black males, you know what I mean? Uh, we looked at as, yeah, we're going to rape the whites, you know, going to rape your daughters and all these types of things. And um, 
the one thing that uh, could s- salvage us is if you know we were more focused on promoting good marriages because they root out all the the societal ills that are plaguing us right now that come from us not building solid family values and not having commitment to you know raising children that would look up to their own parents as role models. So, so then sometimes it appears that if you're a female and you want to get the man's attention, the thing that you do is dangle the sex and he's definitely going to fall. Is that what you're saying? That's Yeah, that's what we've been socialized into doing. Into Whereas that. there are some men who are more attracted to women who are saying, I'm not giving anyone sex. Yes. That's the woman you want. Get it. You know what I mean? Um, and it's because sex is not what you want. You want a relationship. Um, Funny thing, I went into a... And sex should be about making babies. Not about pleasure. No. So then what must people do for sexual pleasure, not her? They shouldn't be using sex for pleasure. There's so many pleasurable things you can do. So many. You can go for a hike. You know what I mean? You can go canoeing. You can go to gym. You can exercise. (laughs) You know what I mean? But once you use your thing that is supposed to be protecting and making your family bigger... For fun, for fun, you're wasting. Then you're wasting. Those are your family jewels. True. I, I did. Um, there's a thing called semen retention. Mm. Have you read about, around semen? Yeah, retention? I've read about it. no um, fab semen retention. All that. Yes, stuff. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. And it, it actually, it actually works. Yeah, it, 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 I used to do that good. a lot. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I, when I'd have a big meeting. Yes. Yes. I wouldn't want like for the entire week or when I'm stressed, I wouldn't want to be intimate with it. Like even when you're married and you've got a partner, it's like yo, I've got meetings. I don't want. I, to be I intimate. don't. Yeah. Then I go in there. And I'm, f- I need, I'm fighting. I need every bit of me. You understand? In me, my juices, my energy. I get that. Actually, I think more people should go and see men retention. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that's, and also just to control themselves because it becomes a habit and it doesn't get assisted by the fact that there's so much pornography everywhere, you know? Yes. And people think that pornography is like, ah, well, you know, it's something that y- it's either you watch it or you don't. It's a choice. It's not a choice. Like as men, we're biologically wired to seek reproductive partners. Yes. You know what I mean? So basically, you're hardwired to be attracted to watching whatever is pornographic or anything else. You cannot fight it. Your DNA, you were designed like that. Um, so it's like a, a, a cheat code. Mm. You know what I mean? They know, okay, we know your weakness and now we're just going to flood you with your weakness to weaken you and weaken you and weaken you. And it's weakening a lot of people, weakening a lot of relationships. You know what I mean? A lot of people can't even be intimate with their partners without the assistance of but- pornography. Or Bad whatever times. other pharmaceutical interventions that there are now. You know what I mean? So those certain things. And then also the act of intimacy now gets reduced into something that is more debaucherous because of the visuals that we are showing. Sure. And so, you know, I was having a discussion. I'm not going to say who, who I was with because obviously people know them. Um, but um, so um, I saw this couple. A mm-hmm. young couple. Yeah, yeah. And like the guy was choking the girl, like, and, and they were kissing each other. I oh, said, stop that. Stop that is that. rape. Don't do rape in front yes. of us. Like, what do you mean? And so this other girl says, no, what do you mean that's rape? I said, they are performing an intimate, like, you know, act. Act. And with, a bit with of violence. violence. What happens when you add sex and violence? Rape. Sexual violence. Vi- rape. Get it. Yes. You understand yes, what I'm yes, saying? Yes. And I was trying to explain to her that because of our watching of this porn and We've normalizing it to this stuff, and then so you feel it. So, like, you'll even find you try, um, uh, you're being intimate with a girl, and she'll say something like, choke me. Cho- and for her, other guys choke her or whatever. Other guys wouldn't take, pay no mind to me. But f- if someone were to say that to me, mm. or if I'm hearing that, if you say to me, choke me, you're saying that I must. I must rape you i must do performing so that's what you fantasize about and everything else and why do you fantasize but, about these things it was it's the content that you've been watching and you're now aroused by that and the degeneracy that stems from like constant watching of porn mm. is shown by um the popularity of even more um i know uh, 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 uh degenerate uh, porn categories so the person who starts watching porn watches like okay something that's soft and but, then they but go hard. The lo- you know what I mean? And they get worse. And then what happens to their, a lot of them is that... They, they want up, to do... No, no. They end up being so turned on by the, uh, uh, watching pornography that now they want to watch their partners with someone else. That's what turns them on. It's called cuckolding. Okay. Yeah. Things like that. And it's because we are exposed to these things. And these images are 
being exposed to young children. When I grew up, mm. we found magazines of sex traders. It's going in. You know what I mean? While walking. And yes, it's fine. Yes, yes, and yes, yes, the yes. private parts would be covered by stars. That was... That was... That was the kids of to, today... You have to imagine, all the kids of today have it all. They, they see... They see everything. The worst things. They see things their parents don't know. Do you think we're... Do you think we're not doing justice to our kids? Do you think we're overexposing our kids? Obviously. Uh-huh. People don't care about their kids. Everyone I see with kids today just takes a phone, pacifies them with the phone. I'm like, why would you give your kid a phone? That's a destruction. That's crack. Uh-huh. Number one, it's going to destroy their eyes. They're going True to be, story. They're going to be blind in school. They won't be able to play sports, be athletic. You know what I mean? They won't be able to have the same confidence of participating in team activities or sporting activities. The things that actually give you confidence when you're in school outside of the academics. You know, Got it. Because the academics don't really give you confidence unless you're in the top 10 or you're a high achiever. True but there's so many ways in which outside of academics and extracurricular activities, the children that maybe struggle to find a place for themselves within the schooling system can find something that at least they're so good at that they're able to put up with the other frustrations that they have through going through. That is outside of their cell phone. You know what I mean? What do you think of... uh, Actually, this is this one thing that I've always wanted to ask when it comes Mm. to children. What do you think of the Fees Must Fall generation? I was there with them in 2015, standing there. What do you think? I'd take a bullet for them. Really? Yeah. Uh I was there to take a bullet for them. There are kids today that have finished school on NISFES because I was willing to say I will stand in front with the students and take a bullet for them with my friends. We we were using whatever influence we had. We said, this is important to us because these are the people that are going to be buying our music. These are the people that are going to be our lawyers one day. These are the people that are going to be our accountants one day. You know, Uh, these are the people that are going to be our engineers. They're going to keep on our lights. So we need to ensure their education. I feel let down, though. Tell me more. I feel let down by students. The all this, students, this current generation, all of students, students that have been benefited from Nesfest. Uh-huh. I paid your school fees. And what have so you done for me? What would you like for them to do? I'd like you? you to use the skills that you acquired with my taxes uh-huh. to benefit my community. One might argue I'm unable to do that because I'm unable to find a place in which I can use these skills. No, it, it, that's not true. Uh-huh. So there's many ways in which you can volunteer and then use those skills to actually add extra value to whatever it is that you're doing in terms of voluntary work. So let's say you volunteer at... Um, let's say I'm an, I'm an unemployed doctor. Yes. Should I volunteer at a hospital? You could volunteer at a refugee center. Valid. You could volunteer as a nurse in a crisis or critical care center. You could volunteer at police, at police stations and help take d- DNA samples of rape victims. There's so many things you could do. I used to volunteer at the police station. I used to write accidents reports. Okay. Just as a volu- voluntary work, you know, as part of community service, you know, do administrative work, certify documents at the Brixton police station. You know, I used to do that. Were you working? Did you have another no, this job? No, part of like... school. Like, you know, when you're in school, you have certain hours of community yes, yes, service yes, yes, that you yes, can yes, do for yes, LO. Yes. I'm just saying. So if I was able to do that in school, walk up to any place and say, I'd like to volunteer for LO, for community service and everything else. It's not like I, I was sanctioned to doing community services. It wasn't like a sentence. I didn't do a crime to do it. I was just doing it of my own volition um, as well. So there's so many things that you can do, and yet we don't see them doing that. You know, we don't see our students helping us get the land back. So many lawyers, none of you guys are uh, focusing on land claims. Mm. So many accountants, none of you are focusing on financial education of the black masses. So many people working in banks, none of you can talk about, you know, financial management. Um, So many people, we've got so many qualified people in so many various and different fields, and they're not benefiting our communities. And that's also because of the way in which we have uh, a very warped um, concept of a family and education and how it comes together. We don't educate our families. We educate individuals within the family. So there's the doctor in the family, there's the engineer in the family, and then they will be celebrated and everything else. Mm. But when you ask them, how many of these children that are struggling in your own household have you helped with their homework? Or were you as siblings? Oh, I've got better marks than my sister. Were you helping each other get the best marks as a family so that if you are Baloyes, the Baloyes sisters or Baloyes brothers or Baloyes um, brother and sister um, are the top achievers in this school because they're helping one another. Or uh, one is the shining light and then the other one is maybe struggling and we're like, oh, well, people can't bless families the same, but you've got the same genes. But isn't that, isn't that like a... 
there's a Jesus thing that that normally happens, a, a savior thing. So in yes. every in every setting, we identify that's the, the savior. Worst thing. No, it, it, you cannot, you're identifying the person that takes away all our responsibilities, so that we don't have to be responsible. The doctor. It's not a savior complex. Uh, it's a I don't want to take responsibility. I want to leave it up in someone else's hands. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, exactly. Is is that what you think that the the unemployed graduates are doing? I feel like um, a lot so, of the unemployed graduates, I mean, like I'm a three-time dropout, so I dropped out three times, but I was never, I can, I'm unemployed, I guess, because, but I'm not looking for employment, so I guess I can't be defined. Why aren't you looking for employment? Why would I need employment? Do you, do you have enough money? No, I've made enough um, 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 investments mm. to create passive income to support me for as long as I shall live. So now pause. Think of, an unemployed graduate that you are saying must go volunteer at a center. By the way, volunteering is beautiful. Yeah. But they, for me, is it not a thing of they don't have the luxury of volunteering in a sense that there's, there's issues at home that this person needs to attend to. You know, I wake up, I've got a degree, now I'm going to volunteer. The family no. has identified so me as the person if, with the degree if, you should be helping out. If no? you don't have a degree, you probably can go to the a person that has a degree, our phone um sebens. Um sebens. You go online, uh, um sebens is advertised to you. That's what I'm doing. No, no, no. I'm just saying, um don't need degree. Your um sebens is advertised to you. Uh, You'll see it in the newspapers. When Magan Bean is hiring for waiters, they don't advertise in the newspapers. Valid. You know what I mean? So hold, hold on. My dad is, is calling me. Uh, Papa. Please put it on speaker this, so we can have <laughs> a no, conversation. Papa. Yeah? Eh, Neleka interview. Ngen tam phone looking at. I'm a queen. Okay, sure. What language is that? Tsonga. So, um, um, I Mag mean, been hiring they, I mean, just like, um, what's that? Uh, Maps Mapunyani had a restaurant, Buns Out. Buns Out. You know what I mean? And he posted it on social media. Uh, it wasn't like an, proper advertising, it wasn't on Job Finder. You know what I mean? So, those people um, are a minority. Number okay. one, the highly skilled highly qualified they are minority uh. and also their skills are supposed to be a public utility if they used public funds, funds to, to pay for those skills you understand so they owe us so whatever they feel is irrelevant because we because pay they for this us. yeah they do you know what i mean i mean if you borrow money from the bank whatever you feel is irrelevant you owe them no but there's no there's no measuring the there rate is. The, the rate in which they can pay you if they're volunteering so for example Nasfus will say you'll pay us back fifty thousand rands if we gave you fifty thousand rands. Now we've measured it. So you're no, saying no, it how long must they volunteer no, for no, no. until they so don't the owe education you is used as a public good in this uh -huh. instance. That's why it's Nasfus. That's what we were fighting for. So when the legislation was introduced to say no, Nasfus must be a grant and not mm. a loan, right? The legislation oh, so was this is introduced. After fees must fall. Yes, sure. that's what we're fighting for. So we're standing there fighting for the policy to be enacted in a way that this is a grant and that education is seen as a public good. Got it. You understand what I'm saying? So education that's seen as a public good is supposed to improve the living conditions of the people, of the making sure that the population is higher educated, higher skilled, um, is more productive, the economic output is greater, the GDP grows, the tax collection is better, so the revenues can be spread about uh, around the communities even better and people can have better access to quality services mm. without having to pay premiums for private access to services because the state is able to provide. How long do they owe you for? For their lives. They're, so their lives are supposed to be dedicated to contributing to the public good. But guess what? They get paid a salary which they can keep for themselves. Okay, valid. You're not in South Africa anymore. You're now in America. Well, I'm in between. In between countries, South yeah. Africa. Why did you leave South Africa? So I can always have summer. So when it's winter here, I go. No, why don't you just go to Durban? Durban has summer no, 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 no. Durban, year round. Dur I mean, Durban. Durban is a shithole right now. Please don't so, say that. <laughs> it Do <needs> not. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I have to say it because, you know, uh, my friends and my brothers from Durban, when I kept mm. telling them, yo, you guys are watching your city go down the drain and you're doing nothing. You're just partying and dancing and not actually taking a keen interest in the state of affairs, mm. you know, and you guys will rue these moments. Joburg is not going to go down because there are enough people that are in Joburg that love Joburg, that care enough for Joburg to ensure that they fix it up. But you don't see that effort. You don't see young people in KZN going around trying to fix up their communities. 
they, you just see them crying to the government and saying, oh, our government has failed us, our government has failed us. No, that's not fair. That's not fair to say about the youth of KZN. Uh, that's I mean, truth. they're out there trying. Maybe you, you don't see it on social media, but no, they are. There, are. there are young people who are doing simple things like clean-up programs. There are yeah, young like people cleaning up that are um, each other's um, you know, enemies and taking each other out. That's the key. Not to cool out. Why are you so I'm just, hurt? That's it's not a hurt. It's 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 actually a lived reality. Yeah. Like people know that the place in South Africa where you need the most private security is KZN. KZN. Durban. You know what I mean? The political killings, whatever killings yes, 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 for yes. economic reasons, the violence and um, just the degeneracy within the society. It's like a juxtaposition in KZN because you got so much conservative traditionalist values juxtaposed with you know just urban debauchery. So between um, um, Itegu and Umkungunlof is like two different worlds. Mm. You know what I mean? And yes, as yes, you yes, get yes, closer yes. to Itegu, it gets more degenerate, degenerate, degenerate. And as you get further north, then, you know, from Ladysmith upwards, if you, even if you go up, no, actually, if you go into like northern KZN, in like from via Richards Bay and you drive up and you see the suburbs and the towns, you know what I mean? Even the villages like Amalokshin, Angas, and Melmoth yes. are not like Amalokshin. I say... Tegui. They look like Amasabab, you know what I mean? Mm. A bit, you know? Do you think that the crimes that have happened in, 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 in Durban are going to get sorted, or is, is, it, is it a bigger play? It's always interesting to hear what you think about these things. Um, you know, I just feel like KZN needs to cleanse itself. How? Like, they need to go back to their their homelands you know <laughs> and actually say what has become of the zulu nation and have a discourse is about it is it that big do you think it's it's a it's a what has become of the zulu nation well big? for me as a tonga person uh-huh. right um uh people that speak my language were conquered by the zulus the shangans uh-huh. you know what i mean um and also we live in the same country um, so I also understand that my um, cultural group is much smaller than the Zulus because, you know, we weren't as good at spreading our culture, you know, and protecting it as they were. So they've, choos- uh, they've proven that their pr- cultural practices are much more successful. That's why they've got such large numbers. Valid. That's why they were able to have so many children and uh-huh. take care of them and bring them to birth. The Zulus are not many because God just said, let there be many Zulus. You know what I mean? The society had to be there for people to be able to have enough children to raise those children in conditions where they can thrive. And that's why the Zulu nation is so large as it is today. And when our largest nation amongst all our indigenous nations or our black nations within the country is in crisis, then that means that the other ones should be scared. The other ones should be, you know, um, worried. Mm. If the Zulus fall, all of us all of us are going to fall after that. You know what I mean? But like on Twitter, people are dragging Zulu people. How how are the Zulu people supposed to be building themselves up and restoring their glory if they're no. being dragged on social If Zulus media? are scared of Twitter, dog, then Shaka needs to come back <laughs> from his grave. <laughs> he needs to come back from their grave, dog. It is. If Zulus are scared of what people are saying on Twitter. People say mean stuff on Twitter, on Twitter all, all the time. time. Yeah, so they're yeah, just yeah. picking on Zulus, dog. They're picking on you because you're great. Because there's, there's lots of us. There's lots of us to gonna, pick. So, they so, it. Then for, okay. so then you must, you must also, as Zulus, you must also now be like, okay, we know that our nation is the greatest of these nations, uh-huh. right? So we cannot be looking down at these people that are just teasing us and trying to, you know, provoke us into little conflicts that are inconsequential. We can't, you know what I mean? You can't be punching down. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like you ignore such things. It's like when a kid is kicking you. You know what I mean? Gee. You know, a woman slaps you. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you just walk away. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to have to slap her back because, you know, the consequences are different for you. Who do you think is the strongest Zulu politician in South Africa? Uh, Jacob Zuma, obviously. It's without mm-hmm. a doubt. He's uh-huh. so strong that he makes all of the others look like I'm a Shangan. <laughs> Who are all of them? <laughs> like all the others. So, like, <laughs> all the other Zulu leaders, like Abu uh, Begim Tolo, uh-huh. whatever, you name them. All those guys look like weak men. Don't say that about I'm serious. Speech. They look like their I'm daughters, their daughters, their daughters, daughters are, are being men. passed around. Yeah, by their friends. Leave their daughters alone. I'm just saying, that's what they look like. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't uh-huh. look like... I didn't touch their daughters, but I'm just saying, you know, their friends would. Mm. <laughs> Speaking about politics, the 29th of May is coming. Yeah. Um, what is 
the state of affairs in South Africa MK politically in your is mind? <laughs> is that what you think? We need to destroy the ANC. Look at what the ANC has done to us. Why? Mandela asked us to destroy the ANC. If, if they? If they let us down. If they do what the apartheid government did to us, uh-huh. then our job is to destroy the ANC. And Jacob Zuma is fulfilling the promise he made to Mandela. Are you skeptics or other people might critique that similar to the EFF, MK comes from the ANC? Well, it's just if EFF is also contributing to destroying the EFF. I don't support the EFF personally, but I support those that support the EFF in the cause of the destruction of the ANC, mm. as it currently stands. The ANC right now is a Zionist-owned and controlled movement that parades as if it is a progressive organization. Gandhi. Meanwhile, I mean, they are... Their, their founders, the people that funded them, were Zionists. Hmm. They were the same people that are defending Israel. So now all of the ANC are wearing all these things and supporting Palestine, but the actual organization and who funds it are Zionists, people that are protecting Israel. And those people that are not funding the ANC currently right now are funding rival parties, the hmm. Oppenheimers, etc., etc., you know, all of them to ensure that the ANC... Uh, if it maybe loses support with its uh, known voter base, can gain support through the use of other proxies that are being introduced to diminish the votes for parties like the MK and the EFF. Can the everyday South African afford to, um, I'll say, destroy the ANC? Because so where we're sitting Mm. now, it's easy for us to say because of our privilege where we say destroy. Mm. Um, mm. But the everyday South African that struggles and you know doesn't have the privilege, mm. the political instability that yeah, could come as a result of can the they best, afford to? That's the best thing. Because you know what? You remove that savior and then you eliminate the savior complex. As long as the ANC is still there as a savior, mm. you know what I mean? It can be used to destroy. What should a young person do if they want to educate themselves on, 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 on who to vote for? We're not just going to listen to you say yeah. MK I don't is think the way. I don't think young people should be thinking about who to vote for. I think young people should be convincing people to vote for them. I think young people should know that the people that have been in leadership have failed so mm. dismally that you shouldn't be trusting any of them with your votes because we've seen that they cannot be trusted. You know what I mean? I think you should trust yourself. And I think you should be running. You could run as an independent now, you know, and you should make the difference that you want to make and then leave the accountability on failure to yourself. You know what I mean? If you fail your own community, it should be you that failed your community because you failed to stand up for your community. I stand up for my community. Mm. I fight when the traffic cops are not doing their job. I fight when the potholes are not there. I fight when our black brothers are being abused by violent cops and being slapped up for small little inferences or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I fight that. I fight the police brutality. I fight the brutalization of students and everything else, you know what I mean? And it's not like anyone is paying me for this. Got it. You know what I mean? I risk my life for this. I risk my safety for this. I risk my freedom for this. But I fight. And I hope that by me fighting, I can encourage other people to see that, yo, you can fight. I don't spend 18 hours in the gym all day just to look like I've got muscles. I've got mu- or look it's like I can fight. I muscle. fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I fight. And I've never lost a fight. Mm. You know what I mean? So... That comes from the practicing of fighting. Random thoughts about fighting. Mm. Um, somebody said that they struggle to fight um, for, 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 for some of us because we're not fighting for ourselves. Mm. Is, do you share those sentiments? I struggle to fight for myself. So therefore I empathize with those who struggle to fight for themselves. Uh-huh. There's so many times I struggle to fight for myself. Uh-huh. So many times where someone just takes my parking and I'm like, ish. Let me just leave. Excuse me, you were willing to take bullets, yeah, I mean, but you're not willing you to fight for a I'm parking saying? space. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? So there's instances where, as human beings, we mm. fail to fight for ourselves, Got we it. fail to show up for ourselves. So we need to be empathetic to those who fail to show up for themselves because there's many things that affect their esteem and their self-confidence that stop them from fighting for themselves. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe they don't feel like they're worth fighting for and they don't feel like they're worth fighting for even for themselves. And we should be empathetic. And for us to be so aloof and to just assume that, you know, it's every man for himself is not going to help anyway. You know mm. what I mean? That attitude doesn't help anyway. So I'd rather err on the side of um, just being generous with my ability to fight for others. Okay. You know what I mean? Whether or not it's, you know, reciprocated or appreciated. As long as I know that I've done the best that I can, that makes me more satisfied with I- looking at the reflection in the mirror and not seeing someone that, you know, um, I wouldn't uh, want children growing up to emulate. Mm.
you fought for a couple of people speaking about fighting for people and you've put a lot of people on especially in the music space and you know mm. the music with the work that you've done in the music space i mean mm. you're the one who invented mm -hmm. dancing and djing DJ. <laughs> yeah well yeah well I, i made it popular i made it pop uh-huh you know what i mean because obviously um i was djing and basically orchestrating a hip-hop and a rap show and you know all of us needed to make the show accentuate like the the guitarist started also doing dance routines the Hectic. drummer would have his own routine so everyone had their own little thing that they do and me behind the decks i'd just be hyping up the crowd jumping up and down dancing doing you know i don't know whatever pirouettes <laughs> and twirls and stuff like that you know and curtsy and curtsies <laughs> As somebody who's between South Africa and America, <laughs> with your strong a South African American, a yeah. South African American, yeah. what 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 do the politics look like? So we're seeing a lot of South Africans move in to the America. entertainment space. They go to America. No, they don't go to America. They, they go to they, Europe. A lot of them go to Europe. You see a lot of South Africans being exploited by Europeans. By Europeans, because we've got the best music in the world. Uh huh. So. In Amsterdam, they're inviting them. Yes. In in Germany, they're inviting them. True story. In all these places, they're inviting them. And I ask these artists, who are obviously geniuses because they can create this artistic work, uh -huh. um, but to extend some of that genius to just analyzing, you know, certain things. Why is it that we don't know any artists from Amsterdam? Who's the biggest artist from Amsterdam? Who's the biggest artist from France? Who's the biggest artist from Germany? Who's the biggest artist? So when uh, you expect to go to Germany and become a global star when they can't when even they produce can't. their own global stars. No, you're just being exploited because you've got something new that's fresh, that's better than anything that they've got, and they can pay you less than they pay the people that they view as stars who are white mm. in the same country. So you're being exploited. And also you're also you're... being exploited in Europe, which has got a very small black population compared to America. America's got f almost as many blacks as South Africa. You know, mm. there are 42 million black people in America. You know, 47 in South Africa. Therefore, you know, we're very similar. Um, English is a very big language in South Africa. English is English a very is big, big language. In America as well. No, in black America. Okay. Yeah. In America, there's also other languages. There's Hispanic and everything else. There's also Italians and everything else. It's oh. mixed. But English is the predominant language. But there are places in America where you'd find someone who works at a shop that does not speak, speak any English. English. You know, I mean, I was experiencing that a lot in, in Florida, like in Miami. Um, as well. Also in Texas, uh, I experienced that. And in New York, there are some shops where the people... People don't not, speak English. They don't speak English. But they work at a shop. It's like, because the price is So how does numbers. it work? You can see the price in numbers. Uh -huh. You bring the item. I scan it. You look at your slip. I mean, we don't need to have a conversation for me to sell you something, hello, right? Hello, it, I mean, no. it, that's the thing. It, once you're in this urban life of let's make everything about convenience... Uh -huh. The humanity is Dies removed off. from everything else. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And that's it. It's like when you go, where am I, my nowadays? You know, you don't talk to the lady, umbuz witinja nimpilo, and everything else. When I used to go to my my back in 2009, 2008, 2007, whatever, we used to go under the bridge within the car because it was small. Okay. The lady would say, oh, yes, uh, what else do you want this time? Okay, okay, ufuna loba, okay, ufuna loba, okay. And then she'd come and bring it out to us. We'd give her the money and we'd know the lady yes, that would that's be always serving us. It would be regular. But now it's like been commercialized. It's just a place that people can come to, strangers come to. And these people are just coming once or, you know, they're not repeat Get it. customers. You, you know what I mean? So you can't build a community of people that support that and there's no humanity mm. in this, you know, I don't know, experience, this cultural experience that we're having. It's mm. it's very commercialized. Do you think um looking at Tyler who's a South African in America also in the entertainment space, mm. does she have a good community if you could predict her future? Um predict. I don't want to predict her future. Come on. The other boats. I know, I, I don't want to predict. Oh, oh maybe her don't predict. Calculate. But I'm just, saying, I'm just saying like um we need to be very supportive of our exports because Get if it. we don't support them, then they will um, work for those that support them. And then they will act accordingly. Yeah. Trevor Noah. That's it. I want her to be the opposite of that. You know what, what I mean? mean? I want her we to, love be, Trevor. To, lean, to lean into South Africa more and not... I mean... Trevor Noah is the biggest disser of South Africa. I mean, he's dissed South Africa the most of anybody else. Anyone who's spread the most 
um, negative stereotypes about, about South, South Africa. Africa. He had the mean? biggest platform. I, isn't wasn't that like Trevor's? Um, even when he was in South Africa, and was still a comedian in South Africa. Yeah, that's fine when you're doing it at home in the family. Is in a, when we Masquarana. Uh, over so Christmas quite, as a family with your cousins. Do you, you think that's what Trevor is doing? No, guys. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, when you're with your cousins as family in Nyakwaran, even uh, if you guys go to the same school, you're not going to take the things that you were saying inside your household at school for everybody, everybody else. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So now that he's got a public platform, it's the same thing I felt about Black Coffee. Why wasn't he playing South African music? Now he's playing it. Now that he's seen that, you know, life South African is, music no, is, life is temporary. You could die in a plane crash without ever having played South African music. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So now that you've seen that you are mortal, now you are coming to your senses. You're starting to listen to the people who are trying to talk to you into your senses before. So that's what I hope. And um, you hope we keep supporting the reason China. why if we keep supporting them, yes. then they will, you know, keep trying to win more support from us. And also then what they do is as we support them, they break down bigger walls for more South Africans to come. As a That's it. But now when we see, ah, <clears throat> oh, she's made it. She's gone. Let's leave her. Then she will be gone. Then she and will she'll be, be gone, taken. Gone. And she'll be an asset for them and not for us. Because mm. right now, Trevor Noah is not an asset for South Africa. You know what I mean? I he's, a, he's an asset for America against China. He's spreading anti-China oh. uh, chi- chi- um, sentiments right now. He's working for the CIA. CIA. Directly, you know, he's the presenter of the White House Press Association Gala Dinner, you know what I mean, Um, which is broadcast on C-SPAN, the CIA media network, you know what I mean, the White House Press Authority is run under the CIA anyway, you know what I mean, the media in America is run by the CIA, you know that. We love Trevor. Yeah, yeah, you're brainwashed. So <laughs> you and everyone that do Not does that. Loving somebody being brainwashed. I mean, it's, no, it's see, like, how I, can I you think... love your own enemy? The CIA killed Lumumba. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to understand that they killed Lumumba. We're talking about what's happening in Congo right now and the atrocities. You know what I mean? The CIA have committed all these atrocities. But the CIA always... are the reason for the Palestinians, you know, suffering the way they do because the CIA propped up Mossad. The CIA are the reasons for the coups that are happening all over Africa, the world, the, the, the South America. The, all the poverty, the, the illegal immigrants, the caravan is all caused by the CIA. They took out presidents. They killed them. They, the CIA took out Zuma. Then I said, I'm saying put in their own agent, Cyril. So, you know? so I'm just saying. So shoot Trevor. He, he works for the CIA. He works for the devil himself. So I, there's no way I can like him. I can empathize with him. He's a homeboy. He, he, he was on Louis Boeta. His school is on Louis Boeta, mm-hmm. whatever I know where that is. You know what I mean? Cool. I can recognize clean. We've grown up in the same... But he's now being a tool for our enemy. I think... So, so I definitely hear what you're saying. Just a sentiment that I always mm. have when people, um, when people speak mm. like that about Umsebe and Zonzo mm. Wound. Um, I think everybody dances with the devil. Yeah. Everybody dances with the devil. Yeah. But there's people who are the devil and then there's people who act like the devil. The CIA is the devil. You understand what I'm saying? You don't dance with the CIA. They bring you to the dance floor. No, no, no. You don't, da- you don't dance with the CIA. The CIA killed JFK. They killed their own president of oh. America because he was so, trying to stop so the thing. So if you were Trevor doing. Noah, what would you do for your career? I mean, like, if I was Trevor Noah, mm. I'd stop what you're doing because I'd understand that there's a point in time where black people are going to call out all the, the mm. blacks that helped our enemies against us. And that he's time is coming. Be in the cross he's going to be in the reckoning. Got it. He's going to be first in line. Got it. Yeah. He's going to be, you know what I mean? He's going to be the Swiss army knife uh, of that. What do you think happened to Elaine's career? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say, um, what do I think? I don't think music was her career. I think it was a hobby, you know, that she was doing while she was studying. And that's showing. It shows. Mm. That's it. Also, you're, if, if she had, if it was a career, she would have pushed a bit harder. Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. So I don't think she took it as a career or something that she's taking seriously. I think she got took it. it as an ability, something that she could do. And then she did what she did. And then she got opportunities. And then she used those opportunities the way she wanted to. But, you know, um, it is what it is. I mean, when she decides to make her career everything, then mm, she will do the work. Because she's got the ability. Yeah, she's got the ability. Yeah. Are you ever going to um reach a point where you come back to South Africa and you feel safe in South Africa? I do feel safe in South Africa. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm here in South Africa 
Am I not feeling safe? Did I come with security? Do I have bodyguards? Who are those people? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very yeah. safe as I work at it. I like I feel at home. Uh-huh. You, Jog, you would want to walk in the streets with me. Really? Do you walking in the streets with me like you just is, getting is laughs like from everybody in the Really? Streets. Oh, come on. Dog. People love you, like people love you, people dog. love you. How does that make you feel? I love people, so uh-huh. you know, I love getting love back because I give love. Uh-huh. So yeah, it, f- I f- it feels good. How do you want to be remembered? I'm done talking to you. I don't want to be remembered. You know what I mean? It's like, um, I thought about that. I want to be forgotten because the things that I've done are such a part, an integral part of someone's life mm. that they don't think about who invented it. You know what I mean? Or their story or their narrative. I want my existence, you know, um, to be uh, immortalized in things that have got nothing to do with my presence on earth. Um, I want to have an effect on uh, people that is uh, personal, but at the same time is uh, not um, idifying. You know, I don't want to be idolized. Mm. Um, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I'm a human being. You know what I mean? I'm not an idol. And so I'm an when, imperfect. I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like sometimes I get a lot of hate because people think that I'm supposed to be a perfect saint or anything else. Oh, Nota, you can't say that. What do you mean you can't say that? Because I am what? No, but because you have influence and if you are yeah. reckless with your words and reckless. your actions, you. I've never been reckless. I can, I can <laughs> whip out. A couple of tweets. Well, people can claim that I'm being reckless, but those same people are those same people that are being promoted by the devil and the media, the CIA. You know what I mean? Um, and those people are trying to destroy anything that's good. Mina, if you look at me, you can point at people who mm. are now able to feed their families, because take of, their kids to school okay. because of my work. Not because of me, because of me, because of me I'm born, yes, because Got of it. the work that I did. You know what I mean? It's an effort. It was a deliberate effort. Like, I'm going to do this work. The results of this work is that this person will be able to support their family. This person will have a career. This person will have a livelihood. This person will be able to be self-confident. This people, person will be able to be someone that is um, highly regarded mm. in society. Do you know what I mean? And I've so been then doing that, that. That makes you unreckless with your words. No. What I'm and saying is that. What, what, what I'm saying is that. Um, when people then see someone like myself, they expect them to be like holier than thou type of, they've got a certain type of perception of how that person is. You know what I mean? So if someone insults me, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not supposed to say, okay. (laughs) Oh no, we know you don't. You know what I mean? So that's the whole entire thing. It's like, um, I don't want to be, a, a walk in a park and I don't want to be treated unfairly because people expect perfection from me that mm. they would never demand of themselves. Do you, are you able to sit down with yourself and calculate the mistakes that you make if you make mistakes or if you consider anything to be a mistake? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say anything is a mistake. I'd say there's certain things that don't work out and there are uh-huh. certain failures, you know what I mean, and things that one can do better. But I sit with myself all the time. Like I'm in constant contemplation. I'm always about self-improving. You know what I mean? I'm always observing, always analyzing. And I'm more critical of myself than I am of anyone or anything. Mm. Yeah. I hold myself to a really high standard. I get really disappointed in myself. You... you know, I get really upset um, by just certain things. Like, I, if I cannot find something, I will not stop until I find it. I get really upset. I will not say, ah, you know what, I'll find it. Uh, no, uh, I cannot do that. Because... I cannot be at peace. How did I lose it? You know, you know I, like... Um, yeah, I'm I'm very self-critical. Okay, you know what I mean. Um, Maybe that's why you criticize you criticize others so harshly. It's because you also criticize no, yourself. No, honestly, honestly, yeah, honesty is subjective. No, honestly, harshly is like uh, when you're actually deliberately doing it to actually hurt their feelings, or mm, mm, you're not mm, trying mm. to be constructive in any way, shape, or form. Um, and you know, people don't like hearing the truth. Let's tell the truth. Your, your girlfriend can tell you, listen, baby, I know um, uh, uh, guys are told to deny, deny, lie. But you know what? If you tell me the truth, if you just tell me the truth, I will forgive you. Oh, God. That's the biggest trap because the truth is they're not ready for the truth. Uh, 
And so, do you think you're the person that should then give them the truth, even though no, no, I'm not. I shouldn't be the, the one that gives them the truth. But I'm just saying, like, my reaction to receiving the truth is different from a lot of other people's reaction who are more insecure about their own identity, who feel like the truth sometimes being exposed might mean that they're less of a person than they want to be esteemed to be. Mm, 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 mm. 